Thursday, August 31st. In addition to my regular glasses, I have special goggles, prescription goggles for playing sports. They're made out of some kind of astronaut plastic that could crash land on Venus and not break. Nothing can break them. If the dinosaurs had worn these goggles and the Earth had been bombarded by mile-wide asteroid boulders, the dinosaurs would still have died, but their goggles would be intact. Nothing can break these goggles. The reason I bring this up is that Ms. Alvarez read the announcement this morning that tryouts for the soccer teams, boys and girls, st- will start tomorrow. I have my gold tendon gear, the prescription goggles, knee pads, and elbow pads in a drawer in my room. I just checked the drawer to make sure everything was ready. I didn't want to find out tomorrow that my gear was all packed away in our climate-controlled storage place on Route 22. Mom and I took some stuff to the storage place today. Mom is not adjusting well to the smoke from the muck fire. She took down her mother's drapes from the dining room and packed them up and her grandmother's quilts from the bedrooms. I won't have them ruined by the smoke, she told me, as I lugged the boxes out to the car. We'll put them back out when your grandparents visit in December. My grandparents are mom's parents. Dad's parents died when he was young. His father when he was 10 and his mother when he was a freshman in college. Dad never talks about them. It's like they never existed. Mom doesn't talk much about hers either. I know that my grandfather retired from the army as a master sergeant. He still works as a security guard in an office building. My grandmother always ran a daycare business out of her home, wherever that happened to be, right up until last year. Mom says that's where she inherited her own organizational skills. Mom is now donating those skills to the Homeowners Association of Lake Windsor Downs. Mr. Costello asked her to be on the architectural committee. It's a powerful position. If you have any plan to improve your house, even if it's just planting a new tree, you have to have it approved beforehand by the architectural committee. Because of this, Mom has taken to spotting irregularities whenever we drive into or out of the development. She's taken to saying stuff like that, look at the trim color on that Lancaster. That's not a regulation trim color. It looks like pea soup. Today she said, look at the mailbox on that Tudor. That's not a Tudor style mailbox. I said, lighten up, Mom. Don't tell me to lighten up. These people all read read and signed the regulations before they bought houses here. Those regulations are serious, Paul. This development has a certain look to it. If you like that look, then you buy a house here. If you don't like that look, then you buy a house someplace else. What harm could it do to have a non-tutor mailbox? Mom thought about that one. Not much, I suppose. I won't send them a letter about the mailbox because the one that they don't have, because the one they have doesn't look bad. But if 20 more houses decided to put up 20 different styles of mailboxes, it'd start to look like a shanty town around here. Mom suddenly got very serious. Paul, I'm talking as somebody who never, ever lived in a nice house growing up. Or even lived anywhere near a nice house. This is not a joke to me. Your house is your family's biggest investment and you have to protect that investment. At the storage place, mom showed her ID to an elderly guard who waved us on. I unlocked our bin, pulled up the sliding metal door and stacked the metal and stacked the boxes inside. On the way home, I turned the conversation to the soccer tryouts. Mom actually had a good suggestion. She said, you should call that Joey Costello boy. You two could run some laps tonight. Maybe we can get a soccer team carpool going with them, too. I called Joey as soon as we got back and asked him if he wanted to start running. He said he runs every night at 6.30 and I could meet him at the guardhouse if I wanted. I said okay and hung up. That was odd. If he ran every night, why had I never seen him? Anyway, Joey turned out to be pretty funny. Up until now, he'd been a little stiff. We started to run with the sand at our backs and just a trace of smoke in the air. On our second life, he pointed to a house, a white Stewart on a corner lot. He said, you see that house? Mr. Donnelly and his son live here. They've been hit by lightning three times. No way. Absolutely. Three times. Are they losers or what? I had to laugh when I noticed the sign on their front lawn. Hey, look, it's for sale. Yeah, like they've got a prayer. I don't know. When you're looking at a house, does anybody tell you bad stuff like that? Joey said, no way. They'd never mention it. What if you found out? They'd tell you that it was a good thing. They'd tell you that statistically it's the safest house in the whole development, maybe in the whole world. There's almost no chance that this house will ever get hit by lightning again. I looked back over my shoulder at the receding Stewart. It'll get hit again and again, and I'll tell you why. Why? The lightning. It knows that spot. What are you talking about? I pointed at an empty lot full of sugar sand. Think about this place. Are they plowed under, after they plowed under all the tangerine groves, what did they do? Who? What did they do? The developers, the construction guys, what did they do? I don't know. They leveled everything out with bulldozers, right? They brought in tons and tons of that white sand and dumped it here. Then they landscaped over everything. Yeah, so what? So let's say that corner house used to be the highest ground around here for miles. Maybe it was at the top of a rise with big trees on it. 
So that's when the lightning always used to strike. Then it must have had big dead trees on it. Whatever. This was the highest spot, and it worked like a lightning rod. Now you could bring back those developers and the construction guys and the engineers and ask them to point out where the highest spot around here used to be. Not one of them would know, but the lightning knows. It hits right where it's always hit. It's just that some fool has stuck a house there. I pointed back toward the front of the development, toward the English, fo English royal family models. Who knows? Maybe someday, after all this crumbles away, the trees will be back and these storms will make sense again. We completed our second lap. Joey was looking at me a little strangely. He said, see you tomorrow. Right. Trials are at four. You need a ride home? Nah, I'll catch a ride with Mike. Okay. I started off, but Joey was struggling with something. He finally said, hey, uh, Fisher, I don't think lightning is that complicated. I don't think it knows anything about anything. I thought about that. Yeah, maybe I'm exaggerating. But maybe I'm not.